so I had to move to Kali Linux. Um, the Scapy was not working very well on my Mac, which is a fairly common problem. So here I have a uh, browser inside Kali Linux, and here's the uh, Violent Python 3 page, and I'm looking at this DNS project. So here, um, if you open this PHP page, it just does a lot of resolutions to random numbers here. 761, ah, maybe it's not going to run. There it goes. Six, nine, there it goes. Every few seconds, it resolves another um, URL. So if I sniff here on, say, any in Wireshark, I should see a lot of DNS packets go by. If I filter for DNS, it will... There we go. And so you see the requests and responses for all these different server names go by. And it's very common in security that you monitor these things to see what's happening on your network. And so we're going to do that with Scapy. So I'll leave that going. And we'll make the first sniffer here. This is called DNS1. And I'll stop this, OK? Nano DNS1.py. All right, so this imports the Scapy library, and then if it sniffs and if it finds a DNS packet, it will then call, if it finds any packet at all, it will call this function called findDNS, and this function will check to see if the packet has a DNS data inside it. And if it does, it'll print a summary and a complete display of that packet. So I save this and run it with Python 3. And now, as those DNS resolutions go by, see server 952, server 64, I see a lot of information about each record. But I'm seeing rather more information than I want, so let me edit it and just take away the full display here. So it shows me only the summary. That'll give me a cleaner printout of what's going on in the world of DNS here. And now I see, there we are, a couple of lines for each one, for each server that's resolved. So I can now monitor DNS fairly easy with Python, and therefore I can write scripts that will search for things in DNS. And you have a series of challenges to play with here. Uh, here, there's a page you can open, which will just show you the flag after a while. It has something like a 10 or 20 percent chance of displaying the flag. So even just using this existing script would do to find this flag. And down here, um, the flag is a little harder to find. And here, you'll have to keep looking for the request. There's a lot of random requests, and you'll have to find ones that are significantly different than the others. There's just a variety of these, and what these do is these simulate real properties of botnets. Because if your computer gets infected with remote control software um, and becomes a member of a bot army, then it will send beacons home. And those beacons will imitate HTTP traffic or DNS traffic, and you can often tell because it will have long um, names with a lot of effectively random uh, characters in it. So there's ones here that have uh, special names, then there's hex encoding, binary encoding, and base32 encoding, which, by the way, is what real botnets use, because DNS does not distinguish between uppercase and lowercase characters. So you cannot use base64 encoding, but you can use base32 encoding, and that's how data is typically encoded. So each character only carries five bits of data. And so you have these long, random-looking DNS names that are secrets, information being sent from your computer to a command and control center via DNS. All right, I think that's enough.